Want to learn the best workflow to develop your Python app on Kubernetes? Keep watching. Hello, I'm Al, and welcome to the Tilt channel. We're focused on the development experience side of Kubernetes to make it easier for you to develop microservices. In this video, I'm going to show you a simple but very effective workflow to develop your Python app on Kubernetes. This is what it's going to look like. Here's my app, and then I change a line of code, and when I come back, it's already updated. Notice you don't have to fiddle around with files, you don't have to wait, you just change your code and it's already there. So I'm going to show you how to use Tilt to make this happen. For this example project, we're using Flask on the Python side, a microcates cluster on the Kubernetes side, and then Tilt to bring everything together. If you're not familiar with Tilt, check out the links below in the description. So let's get started, I'm going to walk you through the app. This is my app, it's very simple. It only does two things. One, it listens on port 8000. And two, it serves an index file to anyone who makes a request. This is going to run as a container. And this container is also pretty simple. I'm copying my files to the app folder inside the container. Then I'm installing any dependencies I might have. And lastly, I just run the Python file that I just showed you. It's that simple. On the Kubernetes side, I have a deployment, and it's a pretty basic deployment. It's called Example Python, and it's going to use an Example Python image. And we're going to need to create this image, because right now it doesn't exist. So to bring these together, I'm going to need a tilt file so that tilt knows what to do. So here's my tilt file. My tilt file is going to need to do three things. One, it's going to need to build that container image. Two, it's going to need to read my Kubernetes YAML so that Tilt is aware of the Kubernetes resources that I'm dealing with. And three, I'm going to set up a simple port forward so that I can access the contents of my application from localhost. That is, so that I can access something that's inside the cluster from outside of it. So here's how I write all of this down. I'm going to start with a docker build function and I'm going to build an example Python image image and it's going to take my current directory. Then I'm going to use a KTML function, and this is the simplest of all. I just need to list all my Kubernetes YAML files, and in this case, it's just one. Lastly, Kate's resource. This is an optional function to add extra properties. So I'm going to use my example Python resource, and the property I'm going to add is a port forward on port 8000. So now I'm ready to run tilt, so I just have to come to my terminal and tilt up. Now you see the Tilt console, and it is building and deploying and all of that. You can also use the Tilt dashboard on the browser. So this is my application. It's now live. I can click the service name and click this link right here, and this is that port forward. So this is my application. This is what it does. Now that Tilt's running, I can make changes to my code, and these changes are going to be updated on the fly as I make them. So let's, let's take a look at that. I can come here, for example, and change this to cats uppercase. And now you can see that Tilt's working. And there you go. So now I can refresh and we have cats uppercase. So this is a great workflow, but as you can see, it took a few seconds too many, six whole seconds. And we can shave this time down to a much smaller number. But before we do that, I want to show you something. This is the default Tilt benchmark, but I'm going to write my own benchmark, which is going to be slightly different. And we can get into specifics, but let's skip those for now. The important part is, this is going to teach you how to add custom functionality to your Tilt workflow that might suit your own specific needs. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back to my editor, and I'm going to do two things. One, I'm going to add a dependency. So my example Python is now going to depend on another resource called deploy. Now I need to create that resource. It's going to be a local resource and local resource is used to run arbitrary commands on your local machine and this resource is going to be called deploy like I said and what it's going to do is it's going to output the current time down to the nanosecond. So here's how we're going to do this here and here and it's going to output to a time file that's going to live locally on the same folder as my service. This file containing the time is of no much use if I don't read it somewhere, so now I'm going to need to add something to my application. 
I'm gonna add a function in time lapse, and what that function is gonna do is read that file, and that file contains a timestamp at the moment when I said deploy, and it's gonna compare that timestamp with the times with the current time when the program's running. What that's gonna give me is the time between me making a code change and that code change being live in a running process. It's a bit different from the default tilt benchmark, so that's why I'm adding a new one. Let me show you. Okay, let's hope this works. Now we can see Tilt is rebuilding and redeploying with my new code. And when I click deploy, it's going to save that timestamp to the file. Once the process is running, it's going to read that timestamp, do the difference. And it's going to tell me that it took 7 seconds, 0.41 to do that. So now I know how much time I'm taking right now. And let's improve on that. So here's how we're going to do it. What's happening right now is that every time I make a code change, so it's going to rebuild that image, it's going to push the image, and it's going to apply that new version to my cluster. All of this takes time, and we don't really need to get a brand new image every time. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to keep the container there. We're not going to make a new one. And what we're going to do instead is sync the files we changed into the container. So if I only change app.py, that's the only file that needs to be updated. That's what we're going to set up right now, and it's going to be a whole lot faster. So I'm back on my tilt file, and the way to do that is to use live update. So live update is going to have to do three things. One, it's going to have to sync my code locally to the file system inside my container. Two, it's going to have to watch for dependencies. If I add the new dependency on my local code, that needs to be downloaded in my container. And the third thing is that deploy button that I just created, I want that to work with live reload as well. So I'm going to add those into the code. So there it is. Let's see if it works. I press redeploy and it took 98 seconds. Let's do this again. Now it took 1.1 seconds. Okay, so this is a lot faster than it was before. Let's make a change and see if this works in practice. So here's my change, index.html, and that's. Okay, enough fun. Let's put this back to normal. And cats. There you go. As you can see, now that this is all set up, I don't even need to look at Tilt anymore. I don't need to think about Kubernetes. I don't need to think about Docker. All I do is I make a change to my code. I refresh, and it's live. Simple as that. So our feedback loop went down from seven and a half seconds down to one second, basically, and that's a huge improvement. I hope that's going to help you to have a more productive development experience. I hope developing like this is going to be more satisfying to you because you're not going to be interrupted all the time with Docker, Kubernetes, and all of that. So I hope this is going to be helpful to you, and please leave a comment below and let me know where else your development experience could be better. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this, and see you next time.